there fellow entrepreneurs welcome back to the channel simply shauna here and on this channel we discuss entrepreneurship specifically having an etsy shop connected with a pod or print on demand company today we're going to be diving into an interesting topic that i have been asked about numerous times should i put multiple niches into one shop or only have one niche in my shop and if I'm interested in designing or creating items for other niches, create multiple shops, one with each of those niches. And for those of you that might not know, a niche or a niche would be like a category. So a shop with just teacher items, teacher stuff, that would be a niche. Or dog mom stuff. Items for that dog mama, whether, they, whether it be a mug or a tote or a shirt, aimed at that kind of category, that type of customer, the customer looking for dog mama stuff. Now I know you might be getting some conflicting advice and that might leave you wondering what's the right thing to do. We'll get a little bit into why I think that different YouTubers have different opinions on this. We're going to go over the advantages and disadvantages of each type of way of doing this, whether you have a niche specific store or more of a general store where you have several niches in it. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you how I've done it and whether or not I'm happy with the way I've done it and what I would change if I were starting over. If you are considering opening your own Etsy shop, then this video is for you. Or if you want to grow an Etsy shop that you've already opened into a shop that's either giving you consistent sales or perhaps a shop that's doing six figures for you, well, then you're still in the right spot. Let's get started. First, let's make sure we're talking the same language. When I use the word niche, I am not talking about a product like a t-shirt or a mug or a tote. I'm talking about a topic, a theme, a category. It can be super specific like fishing or golfing, or it could be more generic like dad gift. Another example of a more specific niche could be teacher and more generic would be like professionals. Now, lots of YouTubers do feel different ways about this topic. Some say to do a niche store, while others advise to do a generic store where you're mixing up all kinds of niches. And you might feel like you're getting that conflicting information, but do not slip into analysis paralysis, which can be so easy to do when we don't know what decision to make. It is often the stopper of success when we just get into this rut and we don't know what decision to make, so we just wind up never making a decision and then never have taking action. If you want to make money on Etsy, you have to be decisive. Really, if you want to make money doing any entrepreneurial endeavor, you've got to be, you've got to be decisive. And stick around to the end because I do promise I will say something that will help you make your decision at the end of the video. First up, we're going to cover the advantages and disadvantages of a niche store versus a general store. And then we'll discuss the topic of multiple stores. And I won't forget at the end to reveal my trade secrets and my personal opinion on the topic. When it comes to choosing between a niche store and a general store in Etsy, there are distinct advantages to opening a niche store. We're going to start there. First, by focusing on a specific niche, you can build a loyal customer base that shares a common interest. That can be extra wonderful because someone who has purchased from you or favorited one of your items, you are now more likely to pop up in search results in the future for them. If they are a nurse and you have lots of offerings in your shop for nurses, you have an opportunity to sell to them again and again. Another bonus here is when they do click on an item that got their interest in search results, and maybe it doesn't quite close the deal, they're not quite ready to purchase it, Etsy will show other items from your shop that they might be interested in. And if you have other nurse items in your shop, then Etsy will pull 
other nurse items that fit along with the SEO that they had typed into the search bar to show them instead of directing them to someone else's shop right away giving you an extra opportunity to make that sale. I know firsthand how well this can work because I have had teachers check out of my shop with nine or 10 shirts, all very different, mixed and matched all over the place. And I know that once they clicked on that first item, they popped in, they saw other items in the shop that were suggested to them and they wound up grabbing a bunch. A second advantage of having a niche store would be that it would allow you to better understand your target audience's needs, preferences, and trends because you'd really be studying that, that one niche all the time. And this would enable you to really get good at creating products that were interesting to this particular set of customers. And third would be marketing strategies. Now, I myself have not used many marketing strategies such as email lists and platforms such as Instagram or Facebook to do much marketing. But this type of marketing would be easier to execute if you did have a niche specific store. To be clear, while I have not used these strategies, I do think that they would be very beneficial. I just did not have the bandwidth to learn these strategies along with all of the new things I was learning about Etsy and about designing and the design apps and market research along with also then taking on the knowledge and learning of how to do marketing. So arguably the fourth advantage of having a niche specific store is that when you run a niche store, you can leverage your expertise and your passion for that niche. It's probably a niche that you have a lot of interest in. You're more likely to have an in-depth knowledge about the products, the types of designs, the different things that would sell during different times of the year, and maybe the competition of what's out there because maybe it's something you've shopped for many times for yourself. And this can give you a competitive edge. And last but not least, perhaps the fifth advantage of having a niche specific store would be that it might be a bit easier for the Etsy algorithm to figure out what you and your store are about. There would be a lot of overlapping SEO as you, that, which is your search engine optimization, those titles and those phrases that you're putting in your title, those phrases that you're putting in your tags that help buyers find you. There would be a lot of similar tags and titles between your different listings. And perhaps that makes it a bit easier for Etsy to know who, what kind of customer to push you out to. So far, I've probably made a pretty strong case for creating a niche specific store. But before you run off and go create your niche specific store, let's chat a little bit about the disadvantages of having a niche specific store. One disadvantage of a niche store is the potential of a limited market size. Since you're targeting a very specific audience, the number of potential customers might be smaller compared to a general store. And this might not be as big a concern if you're willing to go with a niche like dad gifts versus let's say fishing shirts or wedding apparel slash gifts versus bachelorette shirts. And that leads us to our next disadvantage of having a niche store. Some niches can be seasonal or trend driven, even if they are evergreen, which means they make sales throughout the year. And this is going to affect the stability of your sales or consistent sales throughout all 12 months of the year. So fishing might have decent sales during the summer, but maybe crickets during the winter. Going broader, like the example of dad gifts, might do a bit better because then you could do your fishing items during the summer and maybe some beer items, which tends to do better during the summer as well, and then switch to other activities aimed at dad like skiing over the winter. It's really important to consider the longevity and the sustainability of your niche before diving in. How are you going to make sales in that niche every single month of the year? So to say it in a nutshell, your advantages of the niche store, loyal customers, understanding your customer really well, marketing strategies a little bit easier, leveraging your expertise and passion in that niche, and a little easier to maybe get yourself worked into the Etsy algorithm in that area. The disadvantages are the potential to have a limited market size, 
fewer customers, and seasonal or trend-driven nature of the niche you've chosen. Now let's shift to the benefits of having a general store on Etsy as that has its own set of advantages. First advantage of a general store is a larger target market. With a general store, you can reach a broader customer base since you're not limited to one specific niche. If it's done effectively, you can increase your customer base and thereby increase your opportunity to get sales. Benefit number two of a general store, and this one might be, in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits, is that a general store provides more flexibility in terms of exploring new niches, giving yourself the license to design anywhere you want to, and to see where you are able to grab some traction. You are giving yourself the ability to test new designs, test new markets, test new niches, and this really gives you the freedom to learn by trial and error. And the third benefit is a pretty big one also. In my opinion, a general store can bring you more consistent sales over the span of the entire year, month for month because you're really able to build up different niches that work well within the, that particular period of time in the year. And then of course it gives you the chance to cash in during Q4 where you can put as many holiday themed items in your shop as you please in any theme that you choose to design in and during Q4 you can really cash in to that to those customers that are there shopping for Christmas related items and there's a huge market for that. And number four is just the concept of momentum. If you were to let's say open different stores for each niche that you wanted to design in. So let's say I wanted to do teacher stuff, so I had a teacher store, and then I wanted to do dog mom stuff, so I had a dog mom store, or a pet store, maybe I could make a more general one, a pet store so I could have a larger customer base. So let's say a pet themed store and a teacher themed store. Now each of those shops has to gain momentum separately instead of putting them together and then if I can gain traction in both of those niches, the momentum of the shop is kind of double because I've got overall just this bigger momentum happening in my shop with more sales, with more reviews, with um, better interactions in the algorithm between myself, my shop, and the customers because it's all combined under the same shop rather than trying to build these separately in different shops. Which brings us to the disadvantages of having a general store. Disadvantage number one, and I think it's the biggest disadvantage, and it's the one that I have personally seen people really fall into and it become a problem. And it's being kind of scatterbrained or all over the place. A general store can sometimes make people feel like they're going to list two dog mama shirts and then not revisit that again for months. And they're going to, the next day they're going to make two teacher shirts. And then the next day they're going to make two unrelated shirts and they're just all over the place. And maybe you're working in like 30 different niches after a month or two because every day you're switching it. That is a huge disadvantage and it is completely avoidable. That is not how you have to build a general store. Disadvantage number two would be a lack of expertise in the niches that you're designing in. And this can happen because if you are designing in numerous niches and maybe just kind of not really thinking about why you're designing in those niches, you just see a bestseller here, you see a bestseller there, and so you're designing in a lot of different niches that you don't have any real knowledge in, that can lead to not really knowing much about the niches that you're designing in. And in order to make sales, we have to bring interesting designs that speak to those customers to the market. And that is hard to do if you don't know much about that niche. 
And the final disadvantage that we'll discuss is possibly marketing and branding being a bit more challenging if you have a general store. If you have a, a shop that sells cat things, it might be easy for you to do your branding and have your, your look or your theme that it's quickly identifiable to a customer that they're going to be looking at cat, item, cat items when they pop into your store. Where if you have a general store, your branding would be maybe more just colors and fonts that would make it look unified. And then the idea of marketing can be more challenging because if you're setting up an Instagram to drive traffic to your Etsy shop, if it's all cat items that are in your shop, then you can build a following on Instagram of cat lovers. But if you have lots of different things in your Etsy shop, then you might have to have a couple of Instagram pages that are funneling different types of customers to your shop through the different, you know, to the different niches. So that can be a little bit more challenging. To sum it up, the advantages of a general store, you have a larger target market, so a lot more customers that you can sell to. You've got more flexibility in terms of trying out different niches and seeing what sticks. It's easier to build consistent sales throughout the year because you can build up different niches that sell well throughout the different periods of the year. You've got a better chance of building that momentum as all of the niches are working together and all of the interactions with customers are coming together. The disadvantage is easy to get, dis easy to get scatterbrained and kind of be all over the place and not build any one niche out. A lack of niche expertise which might leave you less passionate and the design's kind of lacking in that area and arguably a little more challenging to do your marketing and branding. Now, before I reveal my opinion and how I do it in my shop and if I would do it this way again, I just wanna say the reason that you're hearing conflicting opinions and different YouTubers maybe really feeling strongly one way versus another is because there is more than one good way to do something. Both of these ways have advantages and disadvantages, and they can both be really great ways to set up your shop. So if you've already set up your shop and you went one way or the other with this, we're gonna talk in a minute if you need to pivot, ways that you could pivot, but I think that you should feel good about whichever way you set it up and not feel conflicted about you know one YouTuber saying one thing and another YouTuber saying something else. The truth is there is more than one good way to do something and whichever YouTubers you're choosing to listen to, they're sharing with you how they got successful and it's worth listening to and it's worth appreciating each person's story so that you can learn as much as you can from each person's story as you go through your journey. And if you haven't opened a shop yet or you haven't made this decision yet because you don't know which decision to make, the important thing is the important thing here is to make a decision and take action. Don't get stuck in indecisiveness. So a few tips that might help you decide, and then I'll tell you what I've done. So the first thing you can consider, number one, um, as I putzed my way through this, and I was initially making that decision, I paid attention to revenue and profit numbers that people were sharing. And I relied very heavy on the strategies and on the way that the people that had those kinds of numbers that I wanted to do in my own shop I relied very heavily on their advice. So if there are certain people sharing the types of, you know, profit or revenue numbers that you have your eyes set on, and that's kind of what your goal is, and they're outlining for you, well, this is how, you know, I have it set up in my shop, this is how I'm doing it, then I know that's how I made my decision. For me, I was listening to the Lifehacker couple, and then Cassie Johnson started her channel, and Heather Studio started her channel. By then, I was well into my shop by, they, by the time they started their channels, but it just reconfirmed what my decision had already been. So just something to consider there. As you're listening to other YouTubers, if people are sharing numbers, be thinking about, okay, well, is this where I want my shop to go? Are those the kinds of numbers I'd like my shop to be doing? And then you'll kind of have a barometer of if those are the types of 
suggestions you want to you want to act on number two do you feel really excited about a particular niche because if you do that might be the way to go uh, just be careful make sure it's not a trademarked niche it's a legal niche I when I started my first niche that I really started working in was the Jeep girl niche and I thought about going full Jeep girl because I did not do all of the homework I should have done and did not realize that I was not allowed to be listening to Jeep girl stuff and had to wind up pulling it all out of my shop. So just make sure that you're choosing a good niche. But, you know, if you know a lot about a specific thing and that's going to be fun for you to design in, you're going to feel, you know, looking forward to, to making those designs, then that might be the way to go. And three... You can always change your mind. You're not signing any big agreement with Etsy that says, I'm only going to be making teacher things. If you open your shop making just a particular type of thing, let's say you're a nurse and you're going to do nurse stuff. Okay, do nurse stuff. You can always change your mind later. You can always add another niche later. Or you can start with three or four niches and then if you get traction somewhere, always you could dial it back and become a niche specific store and just work on that particular niche. So there's really no risk here. There's no reason not to just make a decision and go because you can always change your mind. You can always do something different later. So what type of store did I build? Well, the way that I built my store, I really feel like I pulled the advantages in from both the niche specific store and the general store side. It really is a general store, but I only work in a couple of niches. I've gone really wild in those couple of niches. And as a result, I know those niches really well. I know what to list in January for those niches, in February for those niches, in April, in December. I've been able to build them out and really understand the customers in each of these niches. I do allow myself to design in whichever niche I want to. And if I see that I have a lower month than I want to have, I start researching what could go into my shop next year so that this month can be bumped up so that a niche that sells well during that particular month can start building my shop up and i call this rounding my shop out having a well-rounded shop you know that teaching is one of my niches but i believe that if i only did teaching items, I don't believe that I could be making the profits that I'm making. Being the general store allows me to intentionally choose to build out niches that do well and have different like prime times during the year. So this really adds to my being able to have consistent sales. And I have said it before, I think of my, my Etsy shop like a train and I'm always building the railroad tracks, that's my listings down the road so that my train has somewhere to go. It's got that momentum chugging and I want it always with somewhere to go. And allowing myself to have a general store, I feel like that's really allowed me to build really good train tracks that that train can keep chugging on every single month of the year. As far as opening two shops, so I actually think this is a really bad idea unless you already have a successful Etsy, Etsy shop and you've already built it to a place that's kind of where you want it to be. Most people underestimate the amount of energy and work that it takes to actually get the Etsy shop going. And I definitely could not imagine going back in time and building two Etsy shops I don't think I would have been able to do it. And I do think I'm a very persistent person. So I think that I would still be teaching if I had tried to open two Etsy shops because I don't think either of them would have gotten going fast enough for me to be rewarded and continue working. So it, it just takes an incredible amount of energy and work to get an Etsy shop going and to try to do or any business and to try to open two businesses that require that much attention at once could be a fatal mistake. Um, again, 
uh, there are lots of people that have more than one Etsy shop and are really happy with having more than one Etsy shop. Um, I would bet that most of them open, launched them at different times and didn't have two new businesses at once. Guys, if you're still here, thanks for staying to the end. This video was worth my effort because I know if you're still here, this was a topic you were really needing to hear about. Take action, or if you've already taken action, feel good about the decisions you've been making. You can always pivot, you can always add another niche, or you can always drop back and work on that niche that's taking off. Don't forget to smash that like button if you did find value in this video, and I'll see you here in this next one, but of course, not until after, that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away.